Well, welcome back to the program. Uh, it's a musical called That Bloody Woman, the smash hit rock opera about Kate Shepard makes a return to her hometown with a season at the Court Theatre. The musical is by Christchurch-born writers Luke de Soma and Gregory Cooper, premiered uh, at the Arts Festival in Christchurch last year. It is back again, and joining us in the studio to discuss this is the lead actress Esther Stevens and actor Jeffrey Dolans. And good morning to you both. Good morning. Hi, Chris. Let me start with you, Esther. When I think of Kate Shepard, uh, the one word that doesn't automatically come to my mind is musical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- so the show is the brainchild of Luke DeSoma, as you mentioned, and uh, he talks about um, being studying musical theatre in New York and feeling like he wanted to tell an important New Zealand story and an important Christchurch story because he's from here. And um, I don't know where he came up with the idea of turning it into a punk rock musical, but um, we're very glad he did. Yeah, apparently he was, he was on a, a bus on the way back from Philadelphia or some such and had just seen a, a rock out show and we thought, what can I do, what can I do? And he just had a brainwave that he thought about a, a New Zealand hero an icon, and, and Kate was it for him, so uh, yeah. As actresses and actors, when you first heard of this concept, a punk rock musical based on Kate <laughs> Shepard, you probably would have run a mile, did you? Or as um, professionals that you are, did you think this is a good challenge? Because you, you've got to be respectful of the character, but also you want to have fun too and make it accessible, and, I, and I'm guessing... I haven't seen it yet, but it must be accessible because it's getting great reviews. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in all honesty, I got an email several years ago asking me to take part in the very first workshop, and I couldn't at the time because I was shooting some television. Um, but when I did read the concept, I thought, that sounds pretty far out. Um, but it seemed, seems like fate had plans for me. And uh, five years down the track last year at the Christchurch Arts Festival, I signed on to take part. And certainly it is. It's very accessible. Um, we've had audiences the full age range from high schoolers through to yeah. pensioners and um, people seem to love it. And it is good though you can make it accessible because Kate Shepard's story is so powerful and so important. And I note too, Esther, and I said this off here to you, there is a likeness there, actually. The, the same cheekbone structure. There's no ancestry heritage you want to. No, let us unfortunately know. not. I'm actually an Auckland girl, so all of my Christchurch connections are adopted. Um, but yes, I suppose that's wonderful if there's a likeness. Jeffrey, in this musical, you play Richard Seddon, King Dick, the Prime Minister at the time. So uh, yeah. He had only just become Prime Minister when all this was happening, actually. So it was a bit of a, um, you might say, a bit of a rough start for him. Um, but he, had, prior to being PM, he'd, he was quite a vocal um, antagonist of it all. He was quite mm. anti the whole process uh, for whatever reasons we don't really know unless you go digging into uh, the depths of time. Apparently there's a, a biography just being released about him. There was apparently, during the weekend, there was a big interview with the another host who uh, interviewed the biographer, and apparently he came and saw the show on Saturday night, which was quite astounding. Really? So, yeah, so there's a bit of more of an in-depth uh, look into Seddon's life coming up, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Actually. Did you, I mean, we all know the story of Kate Shepard, but did you actively engage in looking a bit of, a, a, at a bit of history? You can say no if you... If you know, I, I had. our resident cast historian. Yeah, really? When yeah. any one of us is stuck for, um, for, you know, the history of the thing, we always go to Jeff. Yeah, it's, <laughs> a, it's a bit of a bad habit of mine, a bit of a trivia a good nut, habit. or a good habit too. I also, I played Richard Seddon in a TV show a couple of years ago about this very issue as well. So I'd already had a bit of um, prelim work uh, done through that as well. So, yeah. so when I think rock pop, pop, no, rock punk, I beg your pardon, mm. I think comedy as well. The interpretation of that, was it difficult to get your head around it initially as an actress? Uh, the comedy in the show? Yeah. Or, um, or, 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 or your initial response thinking how am I, how how can this possibly be funny because it's such a big part of well, to, world history not just new zealand yeah. yeah to be honest i mean when luke approached me and asked me if i wanted to be involved i said send me some songs and send me the script and let me have a look and then i'll mm. let you know and as soon as i started reading the script i was really struck by how funny the dialogue was which of course was written by gregory cooper um, He's and a very funny man. A very funny man. Odd but funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that that show really reflects that. You know, it's quirky and it's fun and it's entertaining. And um, so, I, from reading the script right off the bat, I thought this is great and clever and fresh. Yeah. What are people going to like about it? Because I haven't seen it, and I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing because a lot of our audience wouldn't as well. So here's your chance to pitch it. I mean, it sounds, <laughs> it sounds, as I said before, it sounds accessible and it sounds funny and it sounds off. 
and I mean that in a nice way. Yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, it's a very important story that a lot of people don't know well. They know that we were the first country in the world to get to give women the vote, but they don't know how it came about. So I would say for anyone who has an interest in history, it's worth seeing. Mm-hmm. Second of all, the songs are incredibly strong and very memorable. That's the one of the biggest pieces of feedback we keep getting is people say, this is amazing for a brand new musical to have songs that are so memorable and where can we buy the album? So oh, musically, yeah. you'll have yeah. a great time. And then of course, Gregory's wonderful, hilarious, poignant, funny, interesting, diverse writing um yeah so those are the three main points i would say this was performed last year were you involved in last year's production yeah it's the same cast yeah have you sort of made tweaks or turns to because i saw some of the reviews from last year they were equally as outstanding as they are this year that must be nice so you you don't need to change anything well that's uh, you you would think so but it's 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 grown because we've because last year we performed in the spiegel tent which was um a a really intimate space and uh like you know it's like a little bit of a small circus tent and you go inside and it's this lovely cabaret setting with booths and and drapes and and stained glass windows and mirrors very intimate yeah very intimate Mm. and it was more like a cabaret setting uh, we, we couldn't fit a set in there you know we had the band behind us it was us on stage with a bit of lighting we could to barely fit the band in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah and so you were much more uh, stand and deliver it and, and really interacted with the crowd they were right at your feet um, moving into the big theater so having just done it in Auckland at Sky City for the Auckland Theatre Company and they're producing an association with the court theater and then moving it down here the theaters are big um, they've got stage areas they've got mm. uh, the ability to you know, bring it to life and that's what's happened we've got full sets with the band up on Rostra, we were able to move around more oh, on a proper a stage, different costuming, um, props, the utilisation of props. And so it on, is a different visual experience. Yeah, and on that note as well, our um, our set designer, Rachel, and our costume designer, Lisa Holmes, just mm. the most outstanding women. So mm. visually, it's a real spectacular as yeah. well. Really isn't, it, isn't it lovely performing at the Court Theatre because it feels big enough and small enough to feel intimate at the same time. Yeah. I know it's a paradox, but mm. you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. a nice experience yeah. at the court, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, it's lovely. We definitely connect a lot more with the audience <clears> on this one as opposed to the Auckland audience was a bit more boom, out, out way out. There were 700 seats, you know. We certainly was, were close to some of them, but you, there was that remoteness. Whereas the court you are, you do feel like they're not on top of you, but you are. You can just about reach out and touch everyone, so it's, it's nice. I've seen about three reviews for the current season in Christchurch. They are remarkable. I mean, you must. I know you probably try not to read them, but come on, you must have. They are I great. read reviews. Everyone yeah. always says, oh, you must never read reviews. But I read them. I'm mm. always interested yeah. to hear what people think. We've actually, and we've been very lucky. They quite, they people quite have like loved you. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely loved it. But and also yeah. some of the reviewers have actually, rather than just being a standard, yeah, this is a really nice show thing, they've actually really looked into the depths of the show. And uh, several of them have actually, you know, they've... they've um, gotten into the grips of why the show is happening and, and the content of it rather than just saying lovely performance by them the band was mm. lovely the set was great they've actually done some good ana- analysis into it which has been nice for us too because mm. uh, it shows that, that the people are caring about the story and ultimately the the message at the heart of the piece is not just to look back on the past and go wow this where there's this amazing legacy and this amazing achievement but also to look forward to you know the present and the future and go okay well this is what was accomplished, where are we now and what is the work that we still have left to go, you know, in terms of um, the pay gap and current issues like um, paid parental leave, you know, trying to sort of give it a modern context as well. As Family in, violence, in, yeah. alcoholism, the yeah. whole thing, that's all, this, was, this was stuff that she was fighting for very strongly. Uh, her, main, her main things were the, the alcoholism of the day, Try, temperance mm. was being a very strong part of that. Um, family violence was huge, women's rights was huge. And it's, it's basically coming back and saying, what's changed, guys? Because if I look at it from now, from then... We could have done a lot more major, by yeah, this point yeah, in, 120, agree, in 123 yeah. years from yeah. giving women the vote. We could be a lot mm, further along. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I often feel that if Kate Shepard was alive today, I think she would feel embarrassed in some respects of what bit. we have or and haven't achieved in That's a sentiment actually. that Luke would echo as well yeah. and something he's mentioned a couple of times in speaking about the show. And it's a sentiment that's expressed during the show as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and, um, the, the very start of it is like we're looking at things over you know, the last 123 years of the legacy. What's happened? Yeah. And, uh, and Kate even says, you know, sound familiar to some of the things that they're talking about from the time. So... It's, um, the good, yeah. the bad and the ugly. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and as we were saying earlier too, the, the, the people as such, they know Kate Shepard because she's on that $10 note. They don't necessarily realise why she's there or the sacrifice she went through to get there. Mm. Um, they know New Zealand were the first country in the world, but they don't know the same build-up of how that happened, how it came about. 
Um, so it's a it's a, a really good tale from that perspective too. To fill just in. just finally, give us the details of the name that bloody woman. That's interesting in itself. And I'm trying to work out whether that's a, a swearing interpretation we'll or pass you over to our resident <laughs> historian for that resident one. Resident historian, would you like to <laughs> fill yeah, me in? Because I'm interested because, look, it's a very memorable uh, title, isn't it? That's yeah. for sure. But what's behind that? So apparently it is the, the media of the time referred to her quite regularly as that uh, in that term. Uh, really? Richard Seddon is uh, supposedly, that was his favourite usage for when he was talking about her in the darkened halls of Parliament of the day. It's not very kind, is no, it? No, no. And he wasn't very kind at the time, but he certainly went on afterwards to make a lot of great decisions and changes for the country, still New Zealand's longest serving Prime Minister. Mm. Um, but yeah, so that was apparently the reference that she was made to in the time. They never met, apparently. H- Seddon and, and Shepard never met. So uh, they communicated via um, a telegram and mm, uh, other, letters. other letters and bits and pieces. But yeah, it, throughout that time, never met, which is quite extraordinary, I thought. It is extraordinary. Mm. I thought you were going to say they communicated via Skype. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, nowadays, I think they'd be all over it. Lovely to meet you both. Congratulations on your success.